Okay, this video is a book review of the play Hamlet by William Shakespeare. And this first painting here is beautiful. It's called Ophelia by John Everett Millay. He's part of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood School of Artists from England in the 1800s, mid-1800s. Uh, they're the group that John Ruskin had promoted. Um, a magnificent painting. Uh, Millay did this. She actually posed in his bathtub. Uh, she caught a cold, though, because the heater underneath uh, sort of ran out. That's another long story. But it's a magnificent painting. The Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood is known for uh, making things very natural to life with the background nature and whatnot. And the metaphor for this talk is going to be that Ophelia represents the low-fat vegan diet. I'm sort of comparing Hamlet to nutrition, and that'll make sense. Something beautiful and fragile and that, you know, Hamlet's job should really be to protect so I'm distorting it a little bit in that sense, but it'll, it'll make sense as we get going. Uh, one uh, group of scholars on Hamlet said he was the man who couldn't make up his mind. The ghost, of course, Hamlet's father, represented the good, okay? And in the case of our nutritional metaphors like Walter Kempner, you know, true science, true nutrition, optimal health care. You know, McDougall described Kempner as the greatest doctor who ever lived. And he had incredible results, treated over 19,000 uh, patients. All right, Claudius is now the king, the usurper, who had um, taken over. And that's basically like Big Pharma. Big Pharma runs medicine, okay? Don't kid yourself. Big Pharma owns lots of the journals, owns lots of the scientists, and it makes lots of industry funded. Because one of the things, you're going to hear a lot of con contradictory information in nutrition, because Big Pharma, Big Food, they just pay to get whatever results they want. So they can tell you anything looks good. They'll tell you, you know, something high fat's going to make you lose weight or something. All right, so anyway, so that is the usurper and that real true science, medicine, and nutrition taken over by Big Pharma, uh, just controlled by money, okay? Now, Gertrude is Hamlet's mother. She's now married to Claudius just two months after his father's death, and that, in my opinion, represents conventional medicine. Conventional medicine, in a sense, has hoarded itself out to Big Pharma. So conventional medicine is controlled by Big Pharma to a large degree. I mean, there's a little bit of variation in that, of course, there's the surgical specialties. There are uh, the sort of unusual specialties like radiology, pathology. But overall, the vast majority of money in medicine comes from selling drugs. Okay, and conventional medicine, you know, it could have tried to keep an even point of view and respect the old school, true, real science like uh, the Kempner model of things. But instead, it just married itself to big pharma and lost a lot of its credibility in so doing. And Polonius is a typical example, I think, of how a lot of mediocre doctors behave. They're sort of just lackeys who do whatever the Ivy League tells them to do, don't even think about it or read about it on their own. And what they'll do is they'll recommend the Mediterranean diet, which is a terrible diet. I jokingly had called that the Antichrist of diets, the low-carb, paleo-carnivore, or keto diets. And you read these biochemistry books and you see them recommend this. They're like so stupid. They don't even know what they're talking about. And so that's kind of a sad thing, all right? So like I said, Ophelia is a delicate, beautiful thing that represents the good, the low-fat vegan diet. And Hamlet's job in this context, I would say for me, is to protect her. Okay, I'm going to talk about the book. I'm going to talk about the play a little bit. But in terms of like, how do I see the role? Because, you know, any, any guy envisions himself as trying to be like Hamlet. All the actors want to be Hamlet, okay? Um, that it's weird to be a doctor and work in a medical system where everyone expects the patient to never get better. It's bizarre. It literally is bizarre. You've got a treatment like low-fat vegan diet, 100% cure rate for coronary artery disease, 100% cure rate for type 2 diabetes, near 100% cure rate for early hypertension. Yet, no one knows about it. It's like this big giant mystery. But if you look at the epidemiology and the actual history of nutrition and science, it's obvious. So it's kind of weird working in that environment. And you could never really work in that environment. Big Pharma would never let it happen. So... It's not all the big, you know, Ivy League and famous medical centers. They all recommend, almost all of them, every single one of them that I've seen recommends the Mediterranean diet, which is a joke. It allows alcohol. It allows high fat foods, caffeine, olive oil, you know, animal foods, fish. Uh, it's a terrible diet. Okay. Um, what else? Um, oh, so I, I jokingly said, you know, I have to apologize, Ophelia. I'm sorry about those get thee to a nunnery con comments. I was in a bad mood. I felt she was rejecting me when she returned my gifts to her. Okay, anyways, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, they are the two childhood friends of Hamlet who now have become like Polonius lackeys to Big Pharma, to the king, okay? And they actually tried to help the king get Hamlet bumped off, but he figured out how to avoid that. Um, Horatio was, in the, in the play, the only true friend of Hamlet. It's kind of weird to see Hamlet, you know, this young prince and 
it's rather incredible too when you when you first start to read Hamlet. It starts out, you know, okay, almost a little boring. It kind of reminded me about returning to read the New Testament than the Bible. That I was a little bored at first, and then like the King James Version, for example, would have the quotes of Jesus Christ in red. And those would be like the most interesting part. And so Hamlet's lines in the play would jump out of you. They'd be so much better than all the rest of the play. Uh, but anyways, rather surprising that the only real friend of Hamlet is Horatio. So I jokingly in the nutrition world will say this is McDougal because McDougal stayed true to good nutrition. And there's other great ones out there. There's Asselstyn, there's Caldwell, uh, I mean there's T. Colin Campbell, and there's other great nutrition experts who do lots and lots of good for people. That is all very much true. But it's going to be it's going to be relevant to call McDougal later on in this movie, uh, in this review. Okay, as far as the Hamlets, probably the best place to start would be Laurence Olivier. If you just watch the movie um, Lawrence Olivier's Hamlet is great, okay, and he's real easy to follow. There's subtitles and captions. Uh, Richard Burton has the best voice, but I don't like his his Hamlet videos because he dresses in contemporary. So I mean, I loved his voice. I love him, the actor, but I didn't like this idea of dressing in contemporary clothing for doing Hamlet. I mean, it sort of defeats the point. Uh, other famous Hamlets: Derek Jacobi, Kenneth Branagh. Uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson's the best one, okay? He is sort of a different style than Olivier, but his is the most emotional. He makes you feel it, pronounces the words in a way you can understand them. I was surprised how easy it was to understand most of the words, in part because they're famous quotes. I've heard so many of them before, but also in part, you know, watching the video makes it easier. Of course, you can see the context of it. But anyways, this is the best one. He's one of the best actors of all time. Okay, so here's the famous scene with um, Ophelia, and she returns the gifts of Hamlet, and he's kind of upset by that. She's rejecting his love. In this particular scene in the actual book, you know, her brother Laertes and her father Polonius had basically told her to break up with Hamlet, to stay away from him. And that was something Hamlet was quite upset about. He sort of felt like everyone was turning their back on him, his mother and Ophelia. Um, in our little nutrition metaphor, I say it's his job to protect her, but in the real story, she rejects him and he's pissed off about it and he kind of goes crazy about that. And she herself doesn't want to reject him. She's in love with him, but she's a wimp and she does what her brother and her father tell her, even though she doesn't want to. That's partly why she goes crazy. This one, I already made a video about it that Walter Kempner is like the ghost of, uh, of, uh, the play Hamlet and that's his son, Hamlet. And, um... If you want to watch the video, you can watch it. I'm not going to re go over that now. Okay, so here is Hamlet with his friend Horatio. And this is the one particular scene where they're walking through a graveyard and the gravedigger hands him a skull. And that was York. Alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. He had previously been the court jester for his father. And they were friends. And then here's my joke that um, I kind of made this a joke in the context of McDougal talks a lot about it aluminum as the cause of Alzheimer's and it's definitely relevant as a major neurotoxin but I joke that you know I know a lot more about brain diseases than he does and uh, I, I, I sort of jokingly use the comment that uh, Hamlet said to Horatio there's more on heaven and earth than is dreamt of in your philosophy okay um, here's just some of the scenes where you know Hamlet is very upset about his father's death and you know Gertrude's trying to sort of you know calm him down and and, and she says to him you know you know, people die. Their lives pass on. That's just common. And, and, and Hamlet replies, yes, it's common, implying her behavior is common. And the queen says, well, why seems it so particular with thee? Hamlet says, seems, madam? Nay, it is. I know not seems. That's one of the best lines in the whole play. Uh, I'll just show you a couple paintings. At the end, I'll list the quotes. You can read them if you want. Um, I kind of like the paintings. There's not that many paintings of Hamlet. Uh, this is a really nice one, you know, the play Hamlet had said, the conscience of, the play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Here's a nice painting. This is by Irish painter Daniel MacLeese, and, you know, pretty clever how he sets it up. There's the event, there's the king, there's uh, the queen Gertrude, there's Polonius, here is Ophelia, there's Hamlet, and there's Horatio, Hamlet's one true friend, watching on. Okay, and then here's a, a, a scene with Mel. I like the Celtic crosses in the graveyard with the skull of York walking towards his friend uh, Horatio. They're talking about it. Okay, and so those are the paintings. 
Um, do I think it's worth reading? Yeah, I do. I mean, you have to be in the mood for it, but it's sort of like the idea of a man. How does one decide what to do with their life, where to put their energy and their time? Okay, and so like, why do I stand up for the low-fat vegan diet? Because it's the best thing in all of medicine. I've studied everything just about a person could study in medicine. I really wanted to become a great doctor, and I was kind of frustrated and pissed off that I felt like I had done everything one could do. Triple boarded, first in my class, all that stuff, perfect board scores, but I still knew I wasn't that good of a doctor, and I, my parents both suffered more than they should have because I didn't know by that time what I could have known now, what I know now that could have helped them. That kind of pissed me off. So anyways, here's uh, some of the great quotes from Hamlet. I'll let you read them if you want. I'm, I won't read them just because I know some people want to hear them, some don't. And they're, they're pretty long. There's a lot of them. I got a couple of pages of them. So this is all right here, the best stuff. And for the most part, I got the, uh, the location of it in the play as well. You can just slide along these if you want. Oops. Okay. Almost done here. Okay, so that's basically it. I uh, hope that was interesting.